this is another wonderful time that the Lord has given us that we may rejoice and be glad in it. And so I welcome you to our last session of Changing Others. We have been going through a series of uh, changing others as a source of stress. The desire to change other people so that they can be like us, they can behave like us, so that we can live peacefully in our lives. And this desire has always been a source of stress because as we have seen, it is not easy to change a human being unless he or she is willing to change or unless God intervenes in one way or the other. So we are in part eight, changing others part eight, and it will be our last session in this topic. So we are saying that we have been looking at things that we can change. We have always said that there are things that we cannot change in a human being, but there are others that can change. So I want to take you through things that can change for betterment of relationships. Remember I had said it is not good to change because of a person or so that you can be loved by a person. We had said it is not good to change for that reason because you cannot sustain that change. If, for example, you change so that someone can love you and then somewhere along the line you realize that person does not love you the way you want or the way you'd like to be loved, then what are you going to do? Are you going back to your old self or will you continue with the change? That is why we had said that it's not good to change so that you can be loved by a person. However, there are things that you can change for the betterment of a relationship while you are in a relationship. One of the things that you can change is your interest or hobbies. You know, these are things that can change. These are not part of your personality. So we are saying that no one should pressurize you or put pressure on you to change. But as you move on with the relationship, as you spend time with that person that you are dating with, you realize that there are some things that will change. For example, you will be influenced. Maybe there are things that this person does and you'll find that these things are good, okay? These things maybe is loves football, photography, uh, music, all these things that come as hobbies, you'll find that maybe the person you are relating with has things that he or she does and you find that they are very good eh? and then you also desire to do it. Like I know there are people who get married, one person likes going to church, the other one has never gone to church. In the process of relating, you find even the other one who never used to go to, to church has started going to church and eventually it brings a great change in that person. So we are saying that in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 says, strive for peace with everyone and for holiness without which no one will see the Lord. All right? So we are saying whatever we do, whatever changes we make, 
let them be positive changes positive do not relate with evil people naughty people criminals and then you also become a criminal like i've known there are people who relate with um, people who drink initially they were good people they were not drinking but after relating with uh, people who drink they start drinking eventually they become addicted and at the end of the day their lives are destroyed they are unable to work they stop working because of drinking they start stealing to get money to drink they they start uh, changing their character people who are very respectful they start being disrespectful and all these other things follow in a way that the life of this person who was good becomes destroyed completely so we are saying that maybe when you relate with this other person you may discover new books you may discover new shows you may discover movies sports which you love and then it will bring change in your life the other thing that you can change is health habits for example uh, if you are smoking you can change and stop smoking you can start exercising if you you are influenced by the other person who is maybe doing exercise and you find it is good uh, this person lives a healthy life you will also dis uh, maybe um, decide to start also exercising maybe you start eating better maybe before you met this person you never used to eat fruits you never used to eat vegetables and this person tells you eating these things these uh, fruits is good for your health and so you you also decide uh, what is good for your friend might also be good for you these are good habits all these are good things that would enhance relationship the other thing that can change is where you live i know there are people who are having long distance relationships and these kind of relationships are very torturous they are very uh, they are full of temptations long distance relationships so we are saying that uh, you can also change where you live to go nearer to the person that you are relating with to avoid these temptations to avoid these issues that come with long distance relationships i have seen people accusing each other of unfaithfulness and if you think uh, you cannot trust each other this much it's good to move and be closer to each other other things are bad habits you can change your bad habits like there are people as i've always said who have a habit of coming home very late and you realize maybe if you come home late you are going to the other person is getting annoyed maybe your husband or your wife is getting annoyed so for the sake of peace you decide you are going to change you will be finishing up with your friends early so that you can be home at the right time there are other bad habits like leaving dirty clothes anywhere in the house and if you are living with somebody your wife your husband or whoever you are living with in a house is not happy about this kind of thing and uh, leaving used cups plates anywhere sleeping late watching movies all these are bad habits uh, maybe even speaking with food in the mouth <laughs> they are bad habits that people have like there are people who will not speak when when they don't have food in their mouth they won't be speaking but once the food is in the mouth that is when they will want to speak a lot 
And also there are people who like shouting, 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 shouting. Everything, everything. Maybe even in a peaceful discussion, you will find that there is a lot of shouting. Okay. Uh, you can also change the way you dress. And we are saying this. You should not be coerced. You should not be coerced to change the way you dress. I saw other people demonstrating my dress, my choice. Yes, it is your choice. But sometimes you can relate with a person who has very good taste so that you find that you, you will change. In fact, some of these things we are saying, some of these changes, they come automatically. Automatically, you don't have to be coerced. You will find that if your friend dresses, uh, in, in, you know, wears long dresses, and you, you wear very short ones, you will also desire, maybe you will see this person is smart, and you will also desire to be like this person. Okay, so we are saying there is no harm in changing. If you find you are relating with a person who has a great taste, for you to change and be like that person, it is for better. We are saying, if there are any changes to be done, let them be positive changes, not negative. And I'm telling you, my viewer, never change negative. Never be influenced by people negatively. Do not. Do not. Because it's not worth it. We are also saying that there are other domestic routines. Hmm? Like one may be neat, for example. There may be a person who is very neat and the other one is not. So how do these people relate? How do they live together, my dear? A change has to be made. For example, the one who is neat will have to learn to tolerate the one who is not neat. And the one who is not neat will have to try and be neat. So they have to meet somewhere in the middle. Remember we are saying whatever has that whatever change that is being done, that change should be for betterment. That change should be to enhance the relationship, that change should be for better, not for worse. So we are saying that if you are relating with an untidy person, you have to learn somehow to tolerate, and then the other person has to learn to be neat, meet somewhere in the middle, so that that relationship can be good. There are also other social habits, my viewer. For example, one may be an introvert and the other one may be very social. These are social habits, all right? One likes to stay in the house. The other one likes to go out, is very outgoing. How will these people live together? Again, they have to meet somewhere in the middle. The one who goes out a lot, who likes socializing, will have to learn to stay in the house a bit, you know, not to go too much. The other one who likes staying in the house will also have to learn to go out a bit, so that they also meet somewhere in the middle and see how they can relate. There are also other things, like uh, the, the reasoning the way of reasoning, and the way we argue our points. When you start relating, you might have to learn that the way you have always solved your problems will not work, not with this person, not with this person. The way you have always related, it won't work this time. So you have to change again. You have to start uh, learning how to reason out things, Maybe if you liked maybe quarreling, 
you have to learn to do things calmly if you liked shouting if you liked uh, always what you say is right and you find the other person disagrees you also have to learn to give in sometimes give in sometimes for the sake of peace not that everything you decide it has to be that you have to learn to give in sometimes for the sake of peace and also the controlling of temper that is something that uh, may be part of personality but still if one decides to change one will because every time you realize you are losing it you tell yourself i have to control myself i don't have to lose it keep on telling yourself because you cannot lose uh, your temper the whole of your life and then this temper you realize maybe it even spoils your relationship with the people because every time you try to relate with the people and you lose that temper then everything goes bad so i'm saying this that these are some of the things that you can control the other thing is that we all have visions for our future okay we have visions of the kind of career we would want to have we all have visions of the of the kind of of the number of children we would like to have we also have um visions of what an ideal family is we, we also have we have a ideal uh, ideal love ideal relationship we have these things that we have in our mind this is the way i will want to be loved this is the the number of children i will want to have and this is the kind of family i will want to have eventually when you meet your partner you realize that is <laughs> this person has different perspective in all this all right you don't have to stick to what you had like for example if it is a career hmm? i remember when we were choosing our careers way back we were being told that the best career for a woman is teaching and you find our parents because they used to see teachers and they used to admire the way lady teachers used to behave when we were choosing our careers we were told the best is uh, teaching okay so sometimes you find you have a career that will not allow you to relate with your husband well that will not allow you to bring up your children well because maybe you are going at night you are doing a b c d sometimes you may be forced to change your career for the sake of your family but what i'm saying no one should coerce you if there are these changes to be made people should sit discuss and you see sense once you see sense it will be easy for you to change uh, rather than being coerced there are even i even know there are some husbands who beat their wives because of the career that is that is not right don't beat anybody to force anybody change a career or change the way they think if it is the number of children that is an issue also that you should sit and decide both of you there shouldn't be fighting and coercing and abusing and undermining all these things we have been talking about them when we have been saying they are not good things for any relationship so we are saying this that there is no perfect relationship okay that one we have always said no perfect relationship but what people do they discuss and know the kind of relationship they want to have and once they discuss it is very easy all these things changes can be made but peaceful changes and changes that will make your relationship better 
and it is good my viewer also to appreciate what you have for heaven's sake you know let me tell you something love even the strongest love when it is ignored when it is undermined when it is mistreated when it is demoralized even the strongest love dies my viewer that is the truth even the strongest love will die when you are ignored when you are tortured when you are mistreated when you are it will die it will die and all what we have been talking about we have been talking about the things that will make our relationships better things that will remove stress in our lives so this desire to change people i have been telling you the fact that much as you desire to change people that desire is good but you cannot force people to change all right so that they fit in your box the one you that you have prepared because you want to control people because you want it cannot work sit down and discuss what can't change what can change then what can't change you live with it because there are things that cannot change and it is a fact i keep on saying you cannot change the nature of a person you cannot change the personality of a person is not easy because maumbile kwa kiswahili and that is what makes that person different from you or from any other person all right so we are saying that there are also ways of helping other people to change i want to take you through this very quickly through the ways of helping other people change because you can also help people who are suffering and they want to change you can also assist them to change so the first thing that you can do to change another human being is for you yourself to change change your behavior first if you want somebody to behave the way you behave then you have to change and behave well behave the way you want other people to behave yeah because it might come automatically i told you my viewer an example of a friend that i had uh, when i was in college and i was a christian i used to go and teach sunday school from college the sunday school that was near there i used to go to for prayers i used to go this person this friend of mine was from another religion which i don't want to mention but as a result of seeing my behavior what i used to do and the my way of life she decided to be like me and she changed left her religion and joined christianity and up to today she praises the lord all right and these are the people the people we help to change they will be our crowns and our and our and our joy okay because you you receive crowns one day for this kind of thing that you do of changing people and making them better and so we are saying that when you act in the way you want others to behave you are helping others to unconsciously adopt your behavior you will not even struggle but you cannot be preaching the way we say that you preach <laughs> you preach what you preach water and then you take wine it it won't work it won't work that you are telling somebody like your children for example you are telling your children not to smoke and you are smoking hmm? you are telling your children not to to drink and you are drinking you are telling your children you are grown up children not to beat their wives and you are beating their mother it won't work my friend it won't so you just behave the way you want others to behave if you want others to be loving can you also be loving can you love them love them live 
by example. Be a good example. Let them see how loving you are. If you want them to be kind, be kind to them. If you want them to be calm, be calm. If you want them to treat you well, treat them well. So it, it, that is the law of nature. All right? And then maybe you won't struggle to change anybody. Then we are also saying that it is important to remove temptation. For example, if you are helping somebody to stop smoking, you cannot be keeping cigarettes there. Or you, are, you want to help people to stop drinking, you cannot be putting beer there. Remove those temptations to help people to change. Then, after you, you, you have talked about these issues, because it is important to speak these issues, tell somebody, like if somebody drinks a lot is, and is an addict, tell them it is good to suggest that it is good for them to change for better. Try to reason out with them so that they can also see the need to change. All those behaviors that we are say, we were talking about, the bad behavior, like even in the house, keeping dirty clothes anywhere, leaving used utensils on the table. You can discuss these issues and tell them that you would like them to change, or it is good to change for their own betterment. Tell them it is good. Like, for example, I remember there was a lady who was telling me that she would want to get married. <laughs> and this lady is a lady that had, I don't know whether it was temper or whatever it was, that whenever you pinpoint a mistake, this person starts crying. Whenever, even a simple thing, a simple thing of serving you food, and you say that you are full, you can't eat, this lady will start crying. She was so sensitive, so sensitive. And then I had to tell her, if you desire to get married, then it is important that you work on this kind of character. Because it bores. You cannot keep on crying. What will your husband do? The children are crying. The wife is crying over the issue of being told the food has more salt <laughs> instead of improving or something like that. So I had to start helping this person to change this character for her own betterment. She saw the change because I said sometimes it becomes very difficult when you have that kind of behavior. So you have to talk about it. And then after talking and suggesting that a change would help, then give this person time to decide. Because at the end of the day, my dear viewer, at the end of the day, I have said, change will begin with the person, not with you. You cannot make somebody change. It will begin with the person. So after talking about this and showing the, the sense of uh, changing and showing how better the life will be after the change, leave it to that person to decide. Then we are also saying, treat those people with respect. The people you want to change, you have to treat them with a lot of respect because if you don't, even if somebody is, a, is an addict, an addict of whatever it is, or even if somebody does whatever they do and you get so irritated even that issue of the house that we are saying being untidy and all that you know if you tell people directly and with a lot of disrespect that they are untidy they in fact they will make you their enemy and they will not even see the need to change so we are saying treat the people you want to change with a lot of respect and then we are saying do not coerce, do not coerce people to change or do not try to force, okay? If you try to force change, my friend, 
it will only be long term i mean short term because of here they will change maybe because of here and here i'm talking about maybe even wanting to change your children a child who has bad behavior if you coerce if you coerce they will change because of fear and that will be short term the minute they move out of your house they will just go out there and go back to their old behavior so it is not good to coerce anybody and we are saying that if somebody uh, begs you to help change you have to sit down and agree the terms the terms under which you are going to help this person okay we are saying that they may you may sit maybe you are helping somebody to smoke to stop smoking mm? it is good you sit and decide if i see you smoking one day if i catch you smoking what will you expect me to do if i one time come to your room or wherever you are and i find the cigarettes or the ashes there what will you expect me to do okay what if this person comes one day and tells you i want you to allow me to be smoking one cigar per day what will you do all these are terms that you should agree so that you avoid nagging my friend coercing patronizing belittling undermining all those are things that you should avoid if a person has requested you to assist them change then that is something you should sit down lay terms so that you do not cross the boundaries i keep on telling you that there are boundaries my friend even if you are helping somebody there are boundaries to be observed and these boundaries if they are not observed then you will spoil the whole thing that you wanted to do it won't work because you have crossed the boundaries maybe you have started nagging you have started coercing you have started belittling this person and we are saying that people should be treated with a lot of respect so we are saying this in a relationship if you have tried all you can to change toxic behavior okay and you have failed and you have failed maybe you have tried everything and maybe this one I'll be specific maybe in a marriage or a relationship maybe you have a fiance and you have tried everything you can to change toxic behavior and you have failed we are saying because you cannot change another person you may decide the best thing is to separate from this person is to disengage from this person of course you give them their freedom to move on with their lives and to do whatever they want to do and this is something we have said many times that their freedom ends where you as begin yeah you have to keep a distance for your own safety my friend remember i have been speaking about these things uh considering that many people have died many people have lost their lives why have they lost their lives because of sticking with toxic people yeah you see this person is very toxic you see this person is dangerous and you continue to living you continue living with this person many people have lost their lives that is a fact yeah if you are living down here in a society that i live in you know what i'm talking about people have lost their lives so if you have tried all you can remember i've said you have to try all you can to help this person 
But if you fail, then you have to keep a distance. And you have to set boundaries in a way that they will have no right to trespass on your privacy, your time, your space, or your attention until they realize that they are not doing any good to themselves and change, until they decide to change. The intention for disengaging is to protect yourself so you can move forward with your life. All right, my viewer, it is not to punish these people. You are not dis disengaging to punish them. You are not disengaging to teach them a lesson. You are disengaging for your own peace and for your own safety. That is what you are doing. And remember we said the other time, it has to be done with a lot of love. And you also have to leave the door open. Because these people eventually might see the need to change, they might come with a genuine repentance and you might have to allow them back in your life. Always keep in mind what you can change and what you cannot change. As I have said, you cannot change the past. That is something you can't change, the past. The past is gone. You cannot change. What happened, happened. And you cannot change it. The other thing you cannot change is human nature. You cannot change human nature. The other thing you cannot change is personality. All right? And most importantly, you can only change another person if they truly want to change and have requested your help in making the change. In conclusion, my viewer, I told you that this will be the last session of this series. And in conclusion, Philippians 4 verse 8 says, Philippians 4 verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. My dear viewer, I will say this. If all human beings would pursue and think of what is true, of what is honest, of what is just, of what is pure, of what is lovely, of what is go of good report, etc., there wouldn't be any need of changing anybody, my viewer. If all of us pursue what is good, what is good, and we work for peace, all right, and holiness, without which no one will see God, I'm saying there wouldn't be all the need for all the struggles that we struggle trying to change people. There wouldn't be need. All people, all human beings, would live in peace and harmony. All right? Our relationships, my viewer, at homes, in the churches, in the places of work, all our relationships, even socially, you know, they would be very good, they would be perfect. We would live in peace, harmony, loving. It would be so good. It would be utopia. It would be utopia. Yes, it would be perfect. And so I'm saying this, there wouldn't be conflicts in the world. 
Even all the battles that we are experiencing on daily basis, there wouldn't be such things. If people pursued what is good, what is pure, what is holy, you know, we would live peacefully all the days of our lives. So, in conclusion, I'm saying this. Let each one of us do his or her part to pursue peace and make the world a better place to live in. I think those would be my closing remarks because if we pursue peace, if each one of us does what is good, if each one of us becomes responsible and we do our parts, then the world would be a better place to live. And we would receive, like Psalms 133 says, that how good it is for brethren to live together in unity. You know, because that is where we find the blessings, blessings of God. So if we live in peace and unity, then the blessings of God will be upon each one of us and we will live peacefully all the days of our lives. There wouldn't be any change, any need to change anybody. So, till next time, thank you my viewer. And before I leave, I want to commit you to the Lord. So let's pray. Our mighty, almighty and everlasting God, we come before you this time to thank you, to praise you and to glorify your name. We honor your name and uplift it above every other name. My Father, we know there are so many names in this world, but yours is above every other name. We thank you for your holiness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your care over each one of us. We thank you, Jehovah. We give you all the glory and honor. And our Father, we want to thank you because we have come to the end of this series of changing others. My Father and my God, I want to pray that whatever we have learned, we are going to implement it even to the glory and honor of your name. My Father and my God, let it not be in vain that I've been teaching about this thing of changing others because we know there are things that can be changed and things that cannot be changed. My Father, we pray that you give us strength to change things that we may change. We can be able to change. For those things that we cannot change, we pray that you give us strength to live with them, O oh God. My Father and my God, let them not prevent us from doing your work. Because even our brother Paul had a thorn in the flesh, and he never stopped working for you, my Father and my God. He continued working for you until one day he said, I have run my race, I have won it, dear Lord, and I have kept the faith. My Father and my God, we pray that someday we will be able to say like Paul, that we have fought the good fight, and we have won the race, and we have kept the faith. Oh, my Father and my God, I want to intercede for those people who are in relationships. My Father and my God, some relations are broken and people are suffering right now. I'm praying that you may pick the broken pieces and put them together. My Father and my God, I'm praying that you may teach them in your own way how to relate, oh God. My Father, we know that you are a God of relationship. You began a relationship with us, Jehovah, when we were lost. You sent your only son to come and die for us, my Father, that we may live peacefully, O oh Jehovah. My Father and my God, you bought us with the precious blood of your son. And that is how we know that you are a God of relationship. And so I'm committing those relationships to you, Jehovah. Those broken marriages, I'm praying that you bring them together in the name of Jesus. Those relationships that are not working right now, I'm committing them to you, Jehovah, that you may do something. My Father and my God, I'm also praying for the sick, that 
Father, you may some people are sick mentally, O oh Jehovah. We are praying that these uh, people who are sick mentally, you are going to bring their mind together in the name of Jesus. You are going to heal them so that they may be able to relate with others well. For people who are physically sick, I bring them to you, Jehovah. I'm praying that you are going to touch every part that is aching and heal them. Make them whole again in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we glorify you for this program. And we pray that even as we continue doing your work, you are going to bless us, Jehovah. And you are going to bless our viewers in the name of Jesus. For every need that they have, we bring it to you. That you may meet it and supply according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We glorify you and we honor you because we know you've heard our prayers. For we have prayed and trusted 